Hello. Hello everyone, my name is Sabir Gatti and I'll be chairing this session with Professor Paliccia. It's an exciting session on investigating elite athletes and the dilemmas we face. So I'd like to introduce our, our first speaker, Dr. Anil Malhotra from Manchester, who, as you may already know, was a former private fellow, is a colleague and a very dear friend to me. He will be speaking on, on his particular area of interest, the Black Athlete Song. Thank you, Anil. Thank you, Sabir. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Well, it's a real pleasure and privilege to give this talk on the 15th anniversary of the CRI conference. And I'd like to talk about the challenges of screening in athletes and the Black Athletes Heart Revisited. I'd like to start by highlighting why we're revisiting Black Athletes Heart, starting with the most common repolarization challenge of T-wave inversion. And this affects one in 30 young athletes and is six times more common amongst black than white people. It's well established that T-wave inversion is present in cardiomyopathy and that cardiomyopathy in turn increases the risk of exercise induced sudden cardiac death up to threefold. And this is a tragic event affecting at least 12 young people in the UK alone every week with huge socioeconomic and emotional impact on affected patients, families, and communities nationwide. We reported a six-fold higher rate of sudden cardiac death amongst young black footballers, which corroborated with a four-fold higher rate amongst American black basketball players. So this disparity in sudden cardiac death rates is the first problem. To have Historically, been several challenges when screening black athletes, including correctly identifying such individuals at risk and the false positive rates using various criteria from experts over the past decade have fallen from nearly half of all black athletes using the European Society of Cardiology original recommendations on interpretation of the athlete's heart to 10 to 12 percent using the refined criteria, but this was still deemed unacceptably high. While historically most studies have focused on adult white male athletes, the group now most intensely studied is arguably athletes of Caribbean or African descent, universally termed black athletes, who are participating in competitive sports at all levels and often forming the majority of elite sports teams, such as the World Cup winning team for France in Russia in 2018. Data from adult black athletes demonstrate a six-fold higher prevalence of marked repolarization changes, notably T-wave inversion, and a five-fold increase in the prevalence of left ventricular hypertrophy on echocardiogram compared to white athletes. And taken together with the increased incidence of sudden cardiac death in this population, such phenotypes are often complicate, uh, complicate the differentiation between physiological remodeling and morphologically mild cardiomyopathy. So I'd like to start by giving this poll to the audience. This is an ECG of an asymptomatic 17-year-old black rugby player. And my question to you is, what would you do next? An echocardiogram, nothing, or an echocardiogram, an ETT, and a cardiac MRI? So if I can just ask the chairs to oversee this particular poll, this is the ECG, and the options are Echo, nothing, or more comprehensive evaluation. Okay, so please cast your votes. Are we going for echo, nothing, all clear, or echo, excise test, and a cardiac MR? Looks like everyone's going for the option of echo, excise test, and cardiac MR, or we have some nothing, all clear. Okay. People thinking about it, Anil. Okay. Um, yeah. Really. So, voting. <laughs> We've got the majority of votes for nothing all clear so far. People still thinking whether it should be echo excise test or cardiac MR. So I think three thirds of the audience have voted for nothing all clear so far. Okay with around 20%, I would say, for 
Oh, they're still thinking. So you've got fairly neck and neck for echo versus echo, excise test and a cardiac MR. Whereas 57% for nothing all clear. Okay, fine. And, and, and this in itself highlights the clinical conundrum. Now, the answer is nothing and you'd give this asymptomatic 17-year-old black athlete the all clear. <clears throat> and it's well established that anterior T-wave inversion confined to V1 so even up to V4 is considered an ethnicity-related innocent bystander. But again, the disparity in voting shows the, it highlights the conundrum that we are facing in our day-to-day -day, um, experiences of, of assessing such athletes. This particular pattern is rarely found in isolation in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and isn't usually associated with any other features of ARVC. And another marker is the preceding convex ST segment elevation, which again is, um, is consistent with T-wave inversion in this particular territory. But that differs from lateral T-wave inversion as highlighted by the red circles, which is seen much more commonly amongst black athletes <clears throat> um, compared to white athletes, but is also a hallmark of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and therefore care must be taken with this particular ECG anomaly in black and white athletes. And as I mentioned earlier, expert criteria have evolved over the past decade, culminating in the international recommendations that do account for age and ethnicity. And namely, these are to consider T-wave inversion in V1 to V4 as a normal variant in black athletes and T-wave inversion in V1 to V2 as a normal variant amongst white athletes. And we showed recently that the false positive rates reduced in black and white adolescent athletes screened with ECG and echocardiogram to as low as 1.7% in white, white athletes represented by the grey figure and 3.6% in black athletes represented by the black figure, which would be considered acceptable by any large scale screening program. So while such international recommendations for ECG interpretation now account for some of the observations made in black athletes. Thus far, little attention is given to whether the heart of the black athlete is universal or whether substantial differences exist according to geographic origin. And so I wish to ask the audience this question. Where do you think athletes have the most abnormal T-wave inversion in terms of origin? So athletes from which region have the most abnormal T-wave inversion? Is it A, North Africa, B, West Africa, C, the Caribbean, or D, Middle Africa? Okay, so please cast your vote. I hope your geography is really good. So we're we going with North Africa, West Africa, Middle Africa, or the Caribbean. I want everyone to take part because this is. This is a new thing for, for CRY and we, you know, we want as much audience interaction as possible. So let's see how everyone does. So, so far, I know we've got, oh, it's, people are still thinking about it. So, and the number of people voting is also going up. So, so far we've got 50, 50% versus 45% for Caribbean versus West Africa. It's neck and neck now around 6% for Middle Africa and 3% for North Africa. So I would say it's more or less neck and neck for Caribbean and West Africa. Okay. okay. The votes are still going up and I believe the votes, no, people are still voting. They're still having a think. We've got 53 votes in and I know that there are 100 people viewing today, which is fantastic for CRY. So we've got 46% for West Africa and 45% for Caribbean. Voting's on that. Okay, great. Um, and actually, I think, again, the question highlights are what, what the studies are based on, which are predominantly Western um, uh, Caribbean, West African Caribbean athletes. But the answer, according to the data I'm about to show you, is actually Middle Africa. 
And this is based on Nathan Riding's paper published in the European Heart Journal a couple of years ago that reported a large cohort of nearly 1,700 black athletes who were categorized in line with the United Nations defined geographical regions of North, East, Middle and West Africa, as well as African American and Caribbean. And repolarization anomalies were significantly more common amongst Middle African and West African athletes than in East Africans, ranging from 8.5 to 6.4 to 1.5% of abnormal ECGs, respectively, in East Africans. And in the Caribbean, this rate was 2.4. And off note, abnormal T wave inversion was significantly associated with great, greater absolute scaled, absolute and scaled left ventricular wall thickness, left ventricular mass, and relative wall thickness, suggesting a potential relationship between cardiac muscle enlargement and repolarization changes. But there was no genetic testing to confirm the true genealogy of the athletes, but it was nevertheless a landmark paper that highlighted the regional discrepancies amongst black itself. And so not only are we now observing variations amongst the black athletes are, but the mixed race athletes are, has never before been described. And a mixed race individual is one who has one parent of white Caucasian origin and one parent of black Caribbean or African origin, according to the UK census classification. And there are an estimated 2 million mixed race individuals in the UK, accounting for 3% of our country's population. And conventionally, mixed race athletes have been assumed to demonstrate similar cardiac adaptations to black athletes, although this assumption is unfounded to date and yet to be proven, though this is the fastest ethnic group amongst athletes, both in the USA and in Europe. So my final question is your thoughts on the mixed race athletes. Do you think they demonstrate a higher prevalence of T-wave inversion than black athletes? Do they demonstrate a higher prevalence of T-wave inversion than white athletes? Or do they demonstrate more T-wave inversion than both black and white athletes? So please do cast your votes. Thank you, Anil. This is a toughie, I think. Um, let's see what the audience feel. So are we going to go with T-wave inversion, more T-wave inversion than black and white athletes, a higher prevalence of T-wave inversion than black athletes, or a higher prevalence of T-wave inversion than white athletes. So far, we've only had one individual vote. What happened to the other 99, 99 individuals? Okay, we're getting some more votes come in. So far, we've got 80% for a high, higher prevalence of T-wave inversion than white athletes. Around 11% think it's more T-wave inversion than, than black and white athletes. And we've got 0% so far for a higher prevalence of T-wave inversion than black athletes. So the votes are coming in now. So I think people are voting. We're going up. We've got 42 people voting so far. I would like all other 50 individuals to vote if they if they possibly can. Okay, so 89% so far and the voting has now closed. We've got 47 people who voted and 85 people have voted for a higher prevalence of T-wave inversion than white athletes. Excellent. And that's absolutely right. Um, now, we have reported the differences between 3,000 white, black and mixed race athletes with 1,000 in each ethnic group which I'm delighted to announce has been accepted for publication, but mixed race athletes revealed the highest prevalence of sinus bradycardia compared with both white and black athletes. The mixed race athletes are represented by the red bars, the black athletes by the black bars, and the white athletes by the blue bars. ST segment and J point elevation was highest in black athletes than mixed race and white athletes. Mixed race athletes demonstrated a higher prevalence of left ventricular hypertrophy on the ECG compared with black athletes. But T-wave inversion was most common in black athletes, followed by mixed race athletes, and then white athletes. So 13% amongst black, 9% amongst mixed race, and 2% amongst white athletes. And this diagram shows that when uh, we compared mixed race athletes with white athletes, um, from a structural perspective as well, they revealed not only more anterior and inferior T-wave inversion, but a greater 
left ventricular wall thickness and a slightly smaller left ventricular cavity size. When comparing black athletes with mixed race athletes, we showed less anterior T-wave inversion to similar degrees of inferior and lateral T-wave inversion. Left ventricular wall thickness was slightly less amongst mixed athletes compared to black athletes, but their cavity size was larger, suggesting that the mixed race athlete's heart really does lie between the white and black athletes, though shares more electrical and structural characteristics with the black athletes than the white athletes. And I'd like to spend the final part of my talk on exploring some of the mechanisms that may underpin the observations thus far made with T-wave immersion, left ventricular hypertrophy and black athletes. If subendocardial cells shown by the red circles have an earlier onset of repolarization, which is abnormal, prior to the repolarization of subendocardial cells shown by the blue circles and a rightward shifted action potential, then the wave of repolarization will travel towards the surface electrode and result in an inverted T wave. And this is thought to be the most frequently observed mechanism in myocardial ischemia, although the mechanisms in black athletes yet uh, remains to be resolved. And the dysfunctional um, repolarization gradients responsible for T-wave inversion could be experimentally targeted, for example, through alterations in transient outward potassium current ion channels, ITO, and also among cell signaling pathways of left ventricular hypertrophy that may further our understanding in the future. And there are currently metabolomic and proteomic pathways implicated in the development of and regression of left ventricular hypertrophy in animal models. And functionally, in black and white athletes, the role of vascular adaptations should also be considered, particularly on the development of left ventricular hypertrophy and T-wave inversions. A number of genetic and lifestyle factors, including weight and salt intake and handling, can cause aortic stiffness, endothelial dysfunction, and an overall difference in hemodynamic profiling amongst black individuals, which can result in adverse remodeling in response to exercise load and potentially fatal arrhythmias, but more functional data are also required to help explain different hemodynamic responses to exercise. So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, in revisiting the black athlete's heart, there are a few considerations to take into account. We've seen that recent data from our group have shown that black footballers suffer a six-fold higher rate of sudden cardiac death. I also show from our adolescent athlete data set the recent recommendations for ECG interpretation in black athletes have accounted for a reduction in false positive rates. However, current recommendations are based on the broad assumption that black is applicable to all black athletes, irrespective of geographical descent. And significant regional differences do exist. And into the mix are mixed race athletes with the fastest growing ethnic group. That, and we're just beginning to understand them as a separate entity to white and black groups. But further longitudinal clinical studies and reverse transla translational mechanistic and genetic studies are required to help truly understand the longer term implications of electrical and structural differences in black, white and mixed race athletes' heart. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Anil, for an excellent presentation. Thank you. So we're going to introduce the second speaker now.